Well, let's see what happens with this problem. So they say in your exam spec that you're not going to have to do friction problems in dynamics. Well, this is kind of a no friction problem. Uh, now, we should also point out that some of the things we've been doing have involved friction in a very indirect sort of way. For example, when we're talking about a train slowing down, isn't it usually friction that slows down a train when you apply the brakes or a car? So we've managed to do these deceleration problems and stuff, and, and friction may be the cause of it, but they haven't asked us to compute friction or deal with friction directly on any of the problems. So where were we here? There we go. So the roadway with a 1,000 meter radius curve has a super elevation angle. Is everybody familiar with that term? We're looking at the back of the car. As it drives around the circle, it's curving to our left, as I've drawn it. And you can call this a super elevation angle of 15 degrees. That's the term usually used by transportation engineers. And uh, NASCAR folks call it a bank angle. And you might also call it the camber of the roadway. So as we look at the back of the car, that's the angle we're seeing. What we're trying to do is keep the vehicle on the roadway so we actually want it static with respect to the roadway, which means we need to, as we did in our friction problems in statics, balance all of the forces on this car. Particularly, we need to focus on the sum of forces in the slope direction and make sure those equal zero. We benefit, in this case, from some component of gravity that's directed in the slope direction. There's another component of gravity that's uh, in this direction, and uh, normal to the slope. And between the two of those, we get the entire force of gravity. So we can look at our car as having gravity pulling it straight down. But we can great break gravity into its components, where there's a little bit of gravity in this direction and a little bit of gravity in that direction. Those components can be solved using a little triangle here. Our 15 degree angle is going to go up at the top of this triangle. And this one's going to be mg sine theta. It's in the slope direction, so slope and sine both start with s. And this normal component of gravity is going to be mg cosine theta. So there we go. We've got mg cosine theta here and mg sine theta there. What we're trying to do, ultimately here, is, and actually I'll, I'll, I'll retract that statement that sum of forces in the slope should equal zero in this case. We'll, that, that would be a bit of a more involved discussion. Let's kind of take it from where we want to end up with this. To get this vehicle to turn in a circle, we have to generate centripetal, centripetal force, or radial or normal. And the amount of force we've got to generate is mv squared over r, or mv squared over rho, if you like, rho instead of r. In either case, that r value or rho value is going to be the radius of the curve, which is 1,000 meters. And we're trying to calculate this velocity. We're really hoping that that mass is going to cancel out because we don't have a mass for this car. So we've got mg or mg sine theta 
trying to give us an mv squared over r. Oh, in fact, it's not trying to do the entire mv squared over r, because there's another component to this triangle. That's this component of the triangle. And I'll go ahead and extend mg sine theta out a little further so you can see the triangle I'm talking about. The combination of gravity pulling us down the slope and the extra normal force we get from uh, the roadway curving up in front of us, the two of those combine to give us mv squared over r. So solving this triangle, and we know there's 15 degrees at the center of that triangle there, or the corner of that triangle, we can say that mv squared over r cosine theta equals mg sine theta. Does that make sense that we're solving this little triangle here? Well, fortunately, the masses will cancel out. It's good because we weren't given a mass. And we can say v squared over r cosine theta equals g sine theta. If our goal is to find v squared, then we can say v squared equals g sine theta over, uh, actually r g sine theta over cosine theta. Theta is 15 degrees, we can plug in a value for that. Or we can say v squared is r g tangent theta if we choose to do that. So mv squared over r cosine theta equals mg sine theta, and uh, we can find the velocity to be 52 meters per second, or 51.3, rather. So do you see what, what the approach is there? Does that approach make sense to you? It's kind of an involved problem. It's, it's on the uh, higher end of complexity. And yeah, the cosine part is kind of the trick to it. That's kind of what we're here to do. We're here to torture you with the weird ones uh, so that even those become more familiar. Wouldn't do much good for us to just work the easy problems here, right? Well, the next question is uh, specifically marked not for the civil exam because it's a vibrations problem. I bet you could handle it, uh, but it's not the sort of thing they'll have on your exam. So that's it. That's all the problems for dynamics. So hopefully you survived that experience and learned a little bit from them, from those problems.